It's 7.15. Let's just break away from the crisis in Ukraine for just a moment and talk about the most widespread miscarriage of justice in British legal history. Today, Welsh sub-postmasters who were caught up in the Horizon Post Office computer scandal inquiry will give evidence in Cardiff. 700 post office managers were accused of theft, fraud and false accounting when technology glitches made it look like money was missing from their branches while some went to jail. Many have had their lives and reputations ruined. Only 72 have had their names cleared. Well, Tim Brett Brettnell uh, from uh, Roach in Pembrokeshire was prosecuted in 2010 after a £22,000 shortfall was discovered at his branch. Good morning, Tim. No, good morning, Claire. Um, you are giving evidence today, then. How are you feeling about it? Well, hopefully, I'm hoping it'll, it'll be almost uh, a cathartic experience. This is this is dragged on now for for twelve years. Um, uh, it almost at some point seemed like a totally lost cause. The post office was so obstructive, um, and and fighting us at every opportunity in our quest to, to clear our names and get justice. And twelve years, you know what what a journey it's been, Tim. J just talk us through your story and and how you ended up being prosecuted. What back in two thousand and ten? Yeah, well, I, I took over our, our local village shop um, along with my parents in 2005, and I ran the post office um, without real problem for, 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 for four or five years until I was audited, and this uh, shortfall of uh, £22,500 was apparently discovered. Um, I was then um, f almost forced to... Um, pay that money back to the post office um, to avoid being charged with theft. And as soon as, um, as soon as we paid that money back, I was then charged with false accounting. And you were advised to plead guilty? Yes, um, I was determined initially to plead not guilty because I knew that I hadn't done anything wrong and I was convinced it was a problem with the system. Uh, but my, my barrister, um, obviously acting in, in what he thought was my best interest, explained that it was my word against the post office. Should I, should I stand up in Crown Court in front of a jury, the power of the post office would sort of steamroller me uh, and I'd end up going to prison. Were you very uncomfortable with that at the time? I mean, clearly the outcome, you, you were given a, an 18-month suspended sentence and, and I think 200 hours of community service. I mean, how were you feeling about that when you knew you hadn't done anything wrong, Tim? Yeah, it's a very strange situation to be in and I don't think anyone could quite understand how it feels to stand up in Crown Court and plead guilty something that you know you haven't done, but only based on the hope that you can avoid uh, an immediate custodial sentence. Yeah. And that, um, you know, verdict was, of course, later overturned. How did you feel about that? I mean, clearly you had done nothing wrong. Did you feel vindicated or did you feel angry that you'd been through all of this? Uh, both. A, a huge mix of emotions when it happened. I mean, yeah, we'd, we'd fought uh, myself and I was part of the, the group of 555 sub postmasters who, who sued the post office in 2019, which gave us the judgment uh, which allowed us to go on to get our, our names cleared. Um, but it was such a long time. Yeah. And, and you know, in terms of, of what this did to you and your life and the impact it had on you and your family can you even just just take us through that and, and touch on how deeply it's affected you well yeah i mean if you'd maybe asked me that question five or six years ago i may well have said well you know we've dealt very well with it but now with the benefit of being able to look back um with hindsight and knowing now that um the conviction has been quashed and we've been proven um to have been telling the truth all along you realize what a huge impact had on you and it gets worse when you start to actually look at the details and, and realize how much it's affected uh, the business in terms of turnover. Um, you know, we've lost a huge, huge amount of money, um, but that's sort of secondary to the 
years lost. Um, every job that I've applied for since then, I haven't even managed to get an interview because I've had this fraud conviction hanging over me. Um, and that's just time that will never, and you know, not just me, the other, all the other sub-postmasters involved will never be able to get back. What do you want from this inquiry now, Tim? Well, the inquiry is called the Post Office uh, Horizon IT Inquiry. Um, but to, for me, the problems run much deeper than just the faulty IT. And yes, that, that's the cause or the root cause of our problems. But the, the biggest problem is the fact that the people in the post office t- chose to believe the IT system over honest, hardworking people. Um, and then the post office cho- cho- chose to, uh, to fight us and be obstructive and try and deny us for the last 10 years. And I guess today is a chance for you to have your say. Yeah. This is why the inquiry has been so important to so many of us, is that up until this point, every action that we've been involved in has been part of a group. And although you can get sort of bits of your your experience out there, the inquiry um, really gives each and every one of us that's giving evidence or, or statement to it a chance to to put across how deeply this has affected us all on a personal level. Tim, thank you so much for coming on this morning and talking to us about this. Tim Bretnell there from Roach in Pembrokeshire, prosecuted in 2010. Will uh, get to have his say in the inquiry today. Uh, The post office says it's sincerely sorry for how the victims and their families have been affected. It says it is continuing to take determined action to provide assistance to anyone who wishes to challenge their conviction and that it is assisting the inquiry. It's